Without further ado, it's my distinct pleasure to introduce Sean Frain from Coho Solar, who will be our first presenter today. Thank you all for being here today. Good to see everybody. My name's Sean Frain. I'm a co-founder of Coho Solar. And as some of you all may have noticed this morning, I brushed my teeth. I brushed my teeth with toothpaste out of this little tube, a uh, travel tube. And it was because when I went to the store, I only had a couple dollars in my pocket. So this was basically what I could buy at the time. Hundreds of millions of families around the world in emerging markets get their daily goods in just the same way, buying small packets of detergent, soap, and even smaller packets of toothpaste. Affordability is key when someone walks into a small shop. Nobody wants to take out a loan to brush their teeth. And at Coho Solar, we believe the same thing applies to clean technologies. And we're developing a range of products using refillable energy that enables small packets of clean energy to get to customers through small shops in just the same way that that small packet of detergent or toothpaste gets into a small family's hands. These small packets of energy also enable a range of disruptively affordable appliances in mobile charging, central room lighting, and down the road in water disinfection. Before I tell you how we do that, let me tell you where we're doing it. So this is a tienda in Guatemala. We've worked there for a few years and with this initiative specifically uh, for 10 months. And when you walk into one of these small shops, you'll see, uh, I think up there, there's some Nescafe, small packets of uh, all-in-one coffee. You'll certainly see some Tigo Minutes, which is a mobile phone minutes um, recharge card. And you'll see small packets of other daily goods. Here's an example from India. You have a surf cell, and in bulk size, about half a kilogram, sells for around 6.8 cents per ounce. If you want to buy a smaller size, if you don't have the money at the time to buy that much detergent, then you can buy a small pack and it'll cost you 8.2 cents and that's a premium of you know, a, around 20%. The same thing applies to electricity. Bulk size electricity is basically what comes out of your wall right here, around a quarter per kilowatt hour, even less here in the States. And there is a packetized form of electricity that you can get a lot of places in the world. It's called a double A C or D battery. Except you're not going to just pay 20% premium to get that small packet of electricity. You're going to pay over a thousand fold premium. It is the most expensive form of electricity in the world. But it's also the most widespread form of electricity in the world. Twelve and a half billion units of double A C and D batteries gets bought used and thrown away each year in emerging markets alone. Globally, it's closer to around 60 billion. If you go down a street, I think this is in Shela, Guatemala, you'll see three signs on a store. You'll see Coca-Cola or some other carbonated beverage. You'll see another sign for a Tigo card, which is mobile phone uh, recharge. And you'll see a sign for batteries. So this is a daily good that people are familiar with. The reason batteries are so widespread is that they're convenient, you can get them everywhere, they're affordable with money people have in their pocket. Now that doesn't mean it has good value. You pay money and you get, like I just showed you, not a whole lot of value compared to bulk electricity, but you can afford it with money in your pocket. And batteries can be used in this huge range of devices. They're really the, one of the very few global standards. So what we're doing at Coho Solar is we're embracing those three amazing aspects of the only form of packetized electricity in the world while displacing the disposable battery itself. And we're doing this in two ways. The first is with solar battery rental, and I'll have to do a little show and tell here. So now that same small shop that folks walk into every day or every two days or every three days to buy their daily goods and to buy disposable batteries, now that shop can buy a system like this from our distributors. This system comes with between 20 to 60 rechargeable high quality batteries. And this allows the shop to now offer their customers two options. 
The first option is what they're most familiar with, the AA battery. And in Guatemala, that would cost around, let's say, 30 US cents for one AA, disposable battery. And now the second option is that customer that goes to that shop is offered a solar recharge battery, rented out of the small shop within the community for around 15 cents, upfront cost. That's it. So half the cost. And that rechargeable battery, I have some here, this solar recharge battery has around two to three times the capacity of a regular disposable AA, about the same as a D cell. Now that these batteries are circulating within the community, these solar recharge batteries, we can enable this huge range of extremely affordable devices, 10 times lower cost than what's available on the market now with solar lanterns and the like. I have some here to show you. So here's sort of our higher end model. Uh, this does mobile phone charging and central room lighting. So this will go in the center of someone's room. And this goes on their wall. And it uses the solar recharge batteries. We also have a lower cost offering that comes in a little north of three US dollars wholesale, so around five US retail. Uh, and it uses, it's just a dedicated light, and it uses the solar recharge batteries. And I have to stress, in our model, the individual customer doesn't have to buy their own solar panel. That's at the shop now. And they don't have to maintain and install and figure out how to use that solar panel. That's all at the shop, an income generating enterprise. The way we're doing this is conventional in a way and different in a way. So we go through a series of distributors, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. They're the key to getting these products into the small shops around the world around 35 million small shops globally in emerging markets. And then those small shops can rent out the batteries in their communities, and they can sell these really low cost, but very high quality of life goods, including mobile phone charging and UV disinfection. A question that always comes up when I pitch this is, how do, how do folks return the batteries? Aren't they just gonna keep them? And we've been in pilot for 10 months, as I said, and there's really two things that we've been trying out. One is, in some cases, you do take a deposit. Other cases, you don't. You just do a simple sign-up sheet. And we're really leaving it up to the shop because it depends on the community, uh, the type of, of system you need to put into place to get those batteries back to the shop. Remember, these communities that go to these shops, it's around 10 to 20 families per small shop in general. So they really know everyone in their community. To the customer, when they walk into a shop now, the options that they see are candles and kerosene and cheap Chinese torches and disposable batteries. Those are things that folks can afford with money in their pocket, but again, very little value. If you go up the energy ladder now, what you'll end up is with a Firefly solar lantern or with a D-Light solar lantern. You go one level up and you'll get a Selco solar home system for a couple hundred dollars, and those are great if you can afford them, or if you can get a loan from a bank to let you afford those systems and spread the costs over one to 10 years. However, a lot of families can't afford that, so we're adding another rung to the energy ladder, providing these appliances that are five to 10 times lower cost than anything else you can get in the small shops today, and then providing a recurring stream of solar energy circulating within these communities for around half what folks pay now for battery, disposable batteries, or candles. The shop needs to make money too. Fortunately, we have a huge tailwind in that shops make very little profit margin on disposable batteries, around eight to 10% in Guatemala. They can make five times that with this system because remember, they're not pushing any of their, their margin to a factory. It's all right there in their shop. They're the factory now and they're renting out the batteries and they're keeping all of that. Payback time on the system, it's mostly the batteries themselves, is around four to nine months. So after that, it's pretty much all gravy for the shop. To pull this off, we need two key elements. One is technical expertise in building teams globally to get this stream of products that use the solar batteries into communities around the world. And we also need distribution leadership, experience with distribution uh, networks and, and organizations in emerging markets. And that's what we bring to the table. 
I, uh, I've run Haddock Invention for six years, Coho Solar, another fish is actually a spin out out of Haddock. And we've done around a dozen different distinct technologies in the clean tech space for big clients and uh, stuff for ourselves and communities around the world. And Sarah Bird, she's in the audience there somewhere. She's the one who's hobbling. She has a broken foot. Uh, she has deep experience in managing distribution teams, most recently in Pakistan, running distribution for small packets of, of uh, water disinfection taps. Uh, you can see here we've been quite a few places uh, around the 16 years combined experience that we bring to the table. Uh, now we can add Santa Clara to the list. As I mentioned, distributors are the key. The management's key. Distributors are equally key. So we're developing a system in which you'll never see the Coho brand in any of these communities. We're trying to take our ego out as much as it's possible for an entrepreneur to do. And we're encouraging our partners to brand the product with the brands that they've been building up in their communities over years to make a house brand for clean tech and to leverage all the other brands, the, all, all the other products that they've branded in those communities. And also we're offering very competitive margins. Again, because batteries are so inefficient, disposable batteries, we can capture all this value and spread really quite a lot around to everyone in the chain. These are the two groups we're working with now. Happy Noi in the Philippines and Sea Solutions in Guatemala, two amazing groups. You're going to hear more from Mark later today about Happy Noi. And Mark and I have known each other for a couple years. We were working together before GSBI, and it's just this awesome coincidence that we're both here. If you start at the small shop level and make the system work there, and then build up to the distributor level, make sure it works there then build up nationally and then to a few different countries, this is basically what falls out. There's nothing crazy here and there's no magic going on. We're building up to 15 distribution partners that we can work with closely over the next four years. The reason that this is so amazing, and it just looks like a straight up business that just happens to be clean tech in emerging markets, is because this is packetization of clean energy. This is something that all the big companies are trying to do with their products. Unilever and Procter and Gamble, this is their strategy for getting into emerging markets. This is changing people's lives as well. Now they have access to goods they never had access to before. We're just going to do that for clean tech. To pull this off, we're raising 300,000 in equity. This is going to let us tool up, get production level uh, goods to our distribution partners, and then in spring of next year, we'll be ready to accelerate with replication to multiple distribution partners in a couple different regions. And we think that's where it's really going to take off. We'll be raising another 500000 in spring of 2012. Straight up, angel investment play. We don't think we're going to need institutional investors uh, to pull this all off. So I'm going to end here. This is Las Luces. This is the second community uh, we started to work with in Guatemala in December of last year. And the amazing thing in Las Luces, it's very appropriately named, is that this system, after two months, enabled everyone in the community to be using solar recharge batteries. No advertising, no huge burden of management. It's just there's this value there that's missing now in the packets of electricity that people can get their hands on. So that's when we thought we were onto something. And just like the big multinationals do, packetizing their products to get it into the hands of families around the world, that's what we're going to do just with clean tech. Thank you.